Hello, my name is Adriana Martinez, and today we'll be discussing cross-country running with high school students. So what is cross-country running? It's a great sport to build up cardiovascular endurance, teaching the students to train together for common goal to win as a team. Hard work will pay off. There will be long practices. Putting in the groundwork will help condition students into becoming distinguished athletes. Their concerns with running, however, with this training program I've created, we will try and avoid all injuries. Factors that may cause injuries. There is age. Yes, these students are still developing. With training and guidance, they will be okay. Let's face it, since children learn to walk, they started running. Now it's time to fine tune these running skills. Most injuries occur during the first month of the season. There is gender that has issues with um, injury, male versus female injuries. Injuries are higher for girls. There were no statistically significant differences between girls and boys for the injury rate. Most injuries last between one to seven days. However, 77.6% of all injuries that lasted more than 21 days accounted for only 6.6% of the injuries overall. The injuries lasting more than 21 days are, com are more common to last in girls. The only significant difference between injury rate of boys and girls was the respect to shin injuries. And there are environmental factors. Yes, there'll be mountain terrain, hills, roads, and dirt paths. But if we take into account they're going to be guided to do things correctly, they'll be okay. Weather will also be a factor. Students must stay hydrated. The environmental factors that affect cross-country running are heat exhaustion, dehydration, exposure to sun, and climate change also affect heat. There are, are ways to prevent these heat-related health issues. Common sense and precaution, which I fully agree with. These common precautions are fluid, stay cool, actively hydrated, urine should be lightly yellow, sunscreen, wearing clothes that breathe, and having a healthy diet. With that, as a with as a coach, should be checking the temperatures, making sure that it's not too extremely hot or too extremely cold for children to be practicing. In. Three most common injuries: the patelloformal pain syndrome, more common known as runner's knee; medial tibial stress syndrome, more common name is shin splints; Achilles tendinopathy, foot plantar fasciitis, most more common name is ankle pain. Now, patellar pain syndrome, most commonly known for runners. Now, as we see, this is Olympic runners for a female division. Mackie looks like her knees in pain in the far back. She's in the blue shorts. She's beating her knee. This is an example of knee pain, and most students will portray this. What is patellar femoral pain syndrome? Patellar femoral pain syndrome may be caused by overuse of injury access, weight, and kneecap that is not properly aligned, patellar tracking down disorder or changes under the kneecap. According to the Medical Dictionary Online, patelloform pain syndrome is a degenerative condition affecting the articular cartilage of the patella caused by abnormal compression or shearing forces at the knee joint may cause patellagi. Runner's knee is when there is an overuse syndrome of anterior knee that causes excessive lateral motion. So the first sign of knee pain is a student may grab their knee and say, oh, my knee hurts. And then in these pictures, we can see where the knee is highlighted to hurt. Anatomy of the patella femoral knee. The patella lays over the anterior knee joint and helps the quadriceps straighten the knee by providing a mechanical advantage, similar to the action of a pulley system. Knee flexion and extension are occurring while the patella glides along a groove at the end of the trochlear grove. This occurs from the increased stress between the patella and the femur. Now, there's what anatomically, anatomically is going wrong with patella femoral syndrome is the pain within walking. So, with walking and running, the student will be in pain. The tenderness in the kneecap, which is the cause of the pain, it is an aching, dull, or high intensity pain behind the kneecap. It has been said that people with weak quadriceps calf flexibility for vertical jumps, which use mainly the quads, which leads to having weak quads, are more likely to have patellar femoral pain syndrome. Treatment. Number one will be to ice your knee and ease the pain. To ice it, you'll be doing it for 20, 30 minutes every day for three to four hours, two to three days, or until the pain is gone. Rest is the next big one. Rest and wrap your knee. Use an elastic bandage, patellar straps, or sleeves to give it extra support. Elevate your knee on a pillow when sitting down or laying down. 
There's also rehab exercises. Number one, side lying leg lift. The individual will lie on their uninjured side, tighten the front thigh muscle on their injured leg, and lift the leg 8 to 10 inches away from the other leg, keeping the leg straight and lower, lower it slowly. So they'll be doing this two sets of 15 three times a week for 12 weeks. With this progression, they should be able to run again or even do squats of 50 pounds. The second one will be the standing hamstring. Put the heel of the leg on your uninjured of your injured side on the stool about 15 inches high, keeping your leg straight. Lean forward, bending at the hip until you feel a mild stretch in the back of your thigh. Make sure that you don't roll your shoulders or bound. bend the waist when doing this. You will stretch your lower back instead. So we'll do this 15 to 30 seconds, three sets, twice a day, every day for 12 weeks. Progression is written to squats as well. The next exercise, the next injury would be medial tibial stress syndrome, which is most commonly known as shin splints. One may start to grab their medial tibial shin, as in the picture we see where it's highlighted in red, or the local students will complain that their calves hurt. These are signs of medial tibial stress syndrome. What is a medial tibial stress syndrome? According to the American Academy OD orthopedic surgeon, shin splints are a medial tibial shin syndrome, which is a pain along the inner edge of the tibia. The cause of shin splints are excessive trauma to connective muscle tissue surrounding the tibia. Medial, st medial stress syndrome is an ovaries injury of repetitive stress injury of the shin area. Various stress reactions of the tibia and surrounding mus musculature occur when the body is unable to heal properly in response to the repetitive muscle contractions and the tibial strain. And these pictures here, we see where the student or the athlete is grabbing their calf and their shin because they're in pain and we see where it's inflamed. Now most cases the leg may not look or the medial tibial may not look red or swollen and we can see where the posterior tibialis muscle is hurting and the soleus muscle and tibia which leads down to our the next thing. The anatomy of the medial tibialis syndrome. Anterior compartments has the tibialis anterior muscle, the extensor talus longus, the extensor digitorus longus and the Pronous tetris, while the tibia is anterior or dorsiflexing, the ankle and the foot is inverted. So we can see this in the image right here with the young lady. Overstressing the lower leg can result in shin splints. Shin splints are a small tear in the leg muscles, their point of attachment to the shin. Therefore, the tibia's posterior plantar flexus inverts the foot. The others predominantly toe flexors. So, with treatments, we have rice, which is Rest to three days, reduce activity for the affected area. Ice two hours post injury or if swelling continues. Compression, taping the shin in with a both sides grouping P laterally in an AV shape. Elevate while icing or until swelling reduces. And then the second one would be stop any high impact activities such as running, jumping, squats, or sports. Use ibuprofen or anti inflammatory if pain continues. And see a doctor. We have exercises. One leg stand, one leg bridge, lie on the back with arms out to the side knee, sides of knees, bent and feet flat on the floor. Squeeze glutes to lift high, to lift hips up off the floor. Extend one leg out for 30 seconds and switch. Set. 30 to 60 second hold, six sets, two times a day, for th three times a week for 12 weeks. Progression would be like monster walking using resistance bands. Number two, toe curl. Stand with feet hip width apart at the edge of the towel. Toes and foot gather and slowly pull it toward you. Switch. So we're doing 15 reps with three sets three times a week or 12 weeks. Progression heel drop. Our next injury would be Achilles tenopathias foot plantar fasciitis, commonly known as the heel cord or Achilles tendon ankle pain. The student will start to limp. These are signs of the ankle hurting. They will favor the injured ankle and not put pressure on it. These are signs of injury. What is Achilles tendiopathias foot plantar fasciitis? Achilles tendiitis is inflammation of the Achilles tendon or heel cord. This pain is located in the back of the heel, which is worse in the morning when you get out of bed as well as prolonged sitting. The Achilles tendon is large tendon on the back of the ankle. It connects the big calf muscle at the back of the lower leg to the foot and inserts 
at the back of the heel or the calcus bones. It provides the power and the push off phase of walking and running where huge forces are transmitted through the Achilles tendon. Achilles tendinitis is, us is usually an overuse injury caused by doing too much too soon. In these pictures, we can see where the ankle is normal, then there's tendinitis, tendon rupture, and then the tendon looks. And then you can see in the next picture where it's red, it shows where the ankle is hurting. And then the picture where there's a big circle with the line through it, you can see where it's being overused still. Anatomy of the Achilles tendinopathy. These are gruesome pictures. The Achilles tendon is the biggest tendon in the human body. It has the capacity to resist large tensile forces. The tendon stems from the distal confluence of the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle and inserts the bottom of the calneus. The cell of the tendon, repetitively tenocytis, tendoblast, are responsible for the synthesis of all of the components of the extracellular matrix. Inside the matrix are bundles of type 1 collagen and elastin. Between the collagen, there is a ground substance located which made up of protoglans and glycosamine clamps. Treatment. Again, we're going to go with rice. Two to three days of rest, reduce activities for the area, affected area. Ice, two hours, post injury or swollen continues. Three, compression, which will do an ankle wrap with compression wrap using the basket weaving technique. Elevate while icing or until swelling effects. Stop any high impact activities such as running, jumping, squats, or sports. Use an anti-inflammatory such as ibuprofen. And then we have some rehab exercises also. The soleus stretch, place the leg to be stretched behind and lean against a wall, keeping the heel down. A stretch should be felt lower down near the ankle and the back of the leg. So we'll do this. 20 to 30 second holds, three sets, three times a day for five weeks. Progression will be the soleus heel drop. Two will be the gastrocnemius heel drop, standing with one foot on the step and the heel raised slowly lower. The heel down, keeping the leg straight until the foot is parallel to the ground, but no further. The, the push up to the starting position using the uninjured leg to assist and repeat. Three sets of 15 reps, two times a day, every day for 12 weeks. Progression, soleus heel drop. And in the introductory part of the uh, PowerPoint, we also have videos with a volunteer showing you all the rehab exercises. Thank you again. My name is Adriana Martinez with my critical assignment.